Hi, this is Joe, and I'm going to demo a walkthrough on the iControl shell for Big IP that I wrote as a tech tip on DevCentral. Uh, here's here's the first file in the uh, in the example. It's called iControlSH.ps1. It's the shell engine essentially, with a bunch of uh, commands, things you don't really need to know about. But um, the main piece is this uh, just this input section where we're we're reading the input from the user and acting on it. So I've got a few subcommands we can check out, navigation and uh, command execution. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, we'll start with the shell here. The uh, iControl shell, I've got a PS1 file in one directory. Uh, what you need to do to set this up and to set up all the submodules is to create a directory called modules. right? And inside there I've got uh, directories called with its various iControl interfaces. You'll see where those fit in later. Um, if I do a recurse modules, it shows you all the sub um, you know, under GTM, I've got a, a PowerShell script for white IP, the iControl interface for that, pool, pool member virtual server um, in LTM, and, and various other ones as well. So let's just go ahead and start the shell. iControl SH, first thing it says is please connect. Well, what do I do? You can always type H for help. So let's go um, C, connect. So let's connect the boss, admin, admin. So that's username, password. Um, there we go. There's the uh, the connection information. We can also use the PowerShell ways of retrieving input with uh, um, the uh, get credential commandlet and things like that. If you don't want to um, use username and password in the clear here, so what do I do next? H. Let's do H for help. Um, it shows you the various commands we've done. H already. We've done C for connect. Let's do I for information. Gives you shell information. Um, quit don't want to do that now. The demo would be pretty boring if we did that. Um, R for reloading the modules. It will basically run and reload all the submodules in the directory. So if you're doing development or changes, you can reinitialize them without having to restart the shell. Um, and then the navigation mode. So let's go back to H. Let's see the different child objects. Um, LTM. Let's dig into there. See the different child objects. Uh, pool. And go list and it'll give me a list of the different pool members, the different pools. I could dot dot takes you up a level. You'll see I went from LTM pool to LTM. Now I can H again, I can say pool member. H should give me the commands here at the bottom, no child objects under pool member. So let's do list. Remember that DC5 pool? I'll give you the status. Um, here we go. Uh, let's say enable or disable. Um, let's go. That's a com common uh, task: is enabling and disabling pool members. So let's uh, uh, enable um, DC5 the pool 10.10.10.221 um, colon 80. Successfully enabled. Oh, well, it already was enabled. Let's disable it, and then we can list it out again, and you'll see its availability status is currently red. Um, so let's go ahead and re-enable it and list and you'll see it's back to green. I chose in my example to, use, to do availability status. Um, you could you could definitely do the enabled status as well if you wanted to. Um, basically making it so that no new new connections can be made to the server. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's, I can always say H uh, help on commands, so help list and it'll give you the help for the, the various commands with some um, examples out, uh, usages here and outputs. Um, by the way, that help is is defined when you if you're writing your own modules um, by this little summary right here, um, the metadata included in the top of the list. So here's the actual um, list example of for well that's for pool member. Let's go to pool member list. You'll see here's the example here, and this is all printed in nice PowerShell help format. So that's uh, pretty much it. Um, if you want to build new modules in the uh, shell. You can, uh, oh, I should promise to show you the queue. Quit. Now you're out of the shell. So you've finally finished. If you want to create your own modules, um, go to the modules directory, make a directory called foo, for instance. That'll make you a new set of interfaces called foo. And then add some PS1 files in here with the same format. And then you'll be able to navigate into foo if you wanted to. Um, so it should be pretty straightforward for, for, um, being able to build yourself an environment that you can fully control all the features and aspects of Big IP um, as if you would be in a console shell. So, hope you enjoy it and uh, look for more articles and more uh, um, module development on that on this in the future.